Madam Chairperson, members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to appear before you this afternoon. My name is Tim Roach. I'm a resident of Corvallis, and in Corvallis, I'm on the uh, board of directors of Mid Valley Healthcare Advocates. Statewide, I serve as a member of the board for Healthcare for All Oregon. I represent faith communities on that board. It's my privilege to address you in support of Senate Bill 631. I'm an ordained Presbyterian minister and have been for over 40 years. During my 40 years of active ministry on the East Coast, it was my privilege as well as my professional responsibility to journey with individuals and households into our country's health care system. I sat beside innumerable beds, held the hands of patients and family members as the struggle for health and life itself transpired. I offered prayers for healing, for strength, as well as for consolation. Through it all, you could say I developed an empathy for those who are caught in the clutches of our country's health care system. That personal empathy developed into a personal passion in 2013 when I spent four consecutive months in the stem cell transplant unit at OHSU with my wife as she was being treated for a blood disorder and ultimately died from that disorder, myelodysplastic syndrome. My personal hope is that no individual, no family, no household ever has to go through a health care calamity. But as we all know, the reality of this journey that we call life involves illness and death. And as many of us here today also know, there is absolutely no need for anyone to not have the health care they need when they need it. And there is no need for anyone's financial well-being to be threatened or lost simply because they've had the misfortune to become ill and need health care. So I address you on behalf of Health Care for All Oregon, asking for your support of Senate Bill 361, the Health Care for All Oregon plan. You see, Senate Bill 361 is a legislation that strives to enact one of the primary religious tenets of the major faiths found around the world. In Christianity, we refer to this teaching as the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. In Judaism, this lesson is stated, what is hurtful to yourself, do not to your fellow man. Islam uh, proclaims this instruction by saying, do unto all men as you would they should unto you. The Baha'i community is challenged to say, ascribe to any soul that which thou wouldst not Ascribe not to any soul that which thou wouldst not have ascribed to thee. Buddhism, Confucianism, Hinduism, Sikhism, all have their own forms of this central religious council. With this universal religious teaching in mind, it occurs to me that I know of no one who does not want health care for themselves or for those they love when they need it. So why do we as a people of moral faith and conviction, how can we as a nation and state continue to exclude a large segment of our neighbors from the health care that they need? While millions in our country and state now have health care thanks to the Affordable Care Act, over 30 million people nationally, according to the estimates of the Congressional Budget Office, including about 337,000 in Oregon, will not have the health care they need, even when Obamacare is fully implemented. And there are additionally millions and millions more people who, even though they have health care insurance, do not have the health care they need for themselves and they have their financial well-being jeopardized or even destroyed by the costly nature of health care in our country today. To continue as we do now through our present health care system, to systematically and intentionally ignore and abuse this significant segment of our population is not only unfair, it's inhumane. It's not just unjust, I'd say it's immoral. So that's the moral and faithful motivation that brings me before you this afternoon 
to address you on behalf of Health Care for All Oregon and to urge your support of Senate Bill 361, the Health Care for All Oregon plan. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Again, thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today. If you have questions, I'll be glad to receive those later. Let's hear them. Yeah.